All right, fam, we're back at it again. About to drop this tank off right here. Uh, it's for my 33. We're gonna drop that off at the welding shop. Uh, so we're gonna get that going right now. I'm gonna load this thing up. And uh, take this over to the welder. Hopefully you can get it welded up in a few days. this in the Audi and we're gonna head over there and drop this thing off now they're local so hopefully they can turn it around pretty quick all right so we just pulled up at this shop I'm gonna get over here and um, drop this tank off I think his name is Brandon hey. so this is the tank here So, what kind of car does this go? A uh, 33 Ford pickup. Ooh, those are cool. It's got an Ecotech swap. So oh, you can see that this is like a little hairline barely, crack. Barely, yeah. Is it just here? Yeah. But it's super long. It goes from like there to here. Yeah. Well, we'd oh, have to yeah. go a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah, that. definitely. Do what you have to. I just don't want it to leak. Is that the only place it's leaking from? That's all that I know of. I could I'm fill pretty, it up with water? Just no, I don't think anymore. it needs to, because I've no. already done that. Oh, okay. And this is the only place I see. Okay. All right. I just want to get it back on the road, you know? Yeah. All right, man. Take it right, easy. Man. Check out the channel. Remember to like and subscribe. All right, all right then. All right, cool. So he's going to try to get that done, done and back to us tomorrow. But he said if this job comes through tomorrow, it's going to be next week. I'm good with it. The truck's been down for about three months so another week not a big deal and plus i still have to put in the um fuel pump and find a place to mount the um fuel filters so a post and pre-filter one before and one after the pump so i gotta still install those and i haven't figured out where i'm going to install those yet um because it's a really small um area the firewall is really small on the 33 so all right, I'll two weeks later so i just got a phone call from my welder and they said that the tanks repaired uh they went ahead and welded up the crack in the tank so i can go and pick it up so that's where i'm headed now i'm gonna pick up the tank and then um we'll get back to the garage and install it later tonight so i'll get with y'all when i'm at the shop all right, y'all, so we're here at the welding shop. I'm about to go out here and swoop up this tank. Um, so that way I can have it to install tonight. All right, so yeah, we got the tank now. I'm gonna load it up, get back to the pad, and then uh, hopefully get it installed tonight. That depends on my schedule. I don't know. But we're going to try to get it installed tonight. Alright, so we got the tank loaded up. I'm happy about that. Um, we're headed back to the crib now. I got a few things to uh, finish up with with my day. But later tonight, I hope to install the tank, uh, the fuel pump, fuel filters, and lines. Hopefully, I have everything in stock uh, to put this system together. Uh, I know I have steel braided lines but uh, I don't know if I have enough length or uh, the right sizes. So hopefully have that. And even uh, more than that, I may not have the fittings needed to put this system together. So I haven't mocked anything up. So I really don't know if I have everything in inventory that I need to finish this system in one night, but I'm gonna see if I can uh, with the items that I do have uh, in stock in the garage. So for now, I'm just gonna cut to later tonight. So, we're gonna put this tank in. I also want to upgrade a bunch of things, pretty much do the whole fuel system. So all the existing stuff here is gonna get gutted back. So I'm gonna demo it all back. I'll keep the regulator. I'll reuse that. I'm gonna demo out the old filter down there along the frame rail, uh, the cross member. So I'll remake all these hoses with a steel braided line. Demo out the old uh, pump 
and all these old hoses. I'll reuse the signal wire for my pump, so that I'll re uh, I'll reuse. Uh, the rest of it's going out. So this is the signal wire I'm going to retain and the regulator. So everything else is getting replaced. Um, I even have a new fuel pressure gauge. It says boost, which the packaging is kind of weird. But it's fuel pressure. Um, the picture shows a boost gauge. But it's glow shift. What do you expect? Um... It's a budget brand, so it's all good. I just need something to show me what my fuel pressure is as long as it works. I don't, I don't really care who makes it. As a matter of fact, if it works good, Glowshift, why don't you go ahead and sponsor me? Give me some more gauges to match this one. Uh, but getting back to it, we have these Holly uh, filters. I have a pre-filter and a post-pump filter. Um, you know, so one's going to be a 10 micron and the other one's 100 micron. So 100 before the pump, 10 micron after the pump, uh, between the pump and engine. So we'll get those mounted. Uh, speaking of mounts, we have the mounts here. So we got two of those to hold these filters. So that's cool. Uh, we got a fuel pump. That's going to be going in too. It's a Holly. I don't remember what model. I'm not going to go into that. Um, I might get the specs. If I find the specs, I'll go ahead and put it on the screen. But that's my pump. Yeah, I don't think it really said. Oh, here it is. Uh, 400 liters per hour. 12170. Uh, electric fuel pump so again this is a holly 400 liter per hour pump that's going to go in there uh, we got the mount the gauge the fuel filters themselves a bunch of an fittings um, and then i have a also adapter here somewhere to hook up my fuel pressure so make sure i have that uh, and then i have this stuff here which um, I'm going to use as a rubber, um, as a rubber damper between the metal tank support. See, I have some old rubber bicycle tubes that I cut to put in there to try to protect it. Um, they were still there, but obviously not working so well, I guess, because the tank cracked. Um, so I'm going to get rid of these. And um, I'm going to use this rubber here. So it's an adhesive rubber, it has an uh, adhesive back strip, and I'll peel and stick that. It's cut to the right length in order to put down here along these rails to give the um, tank kind of a more cushiony area to sit on. Uh, so hopefully we don't spring any more leaks. Alright, so we're going to get started here by just demoing this stuff out. Alright, let's get straight to it. I'm going to start taking off, taking off these hoses to the old pump, I'll get rid of that and then we'll get it to the fuel filter and the fuel filter out as well. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and um, save this return line, do that last because if I run out of steel braided um, line, I'm going to uh, reuse this low pressure line for the return. It's all good. I'd rather not run out of hose. So we're just going to take this out. We disconnect it here from the regulator, the and fitting on this 90 degree. Um, and I don't think we're connected anywhere else. So we're just going to pull this whole assembly out. It does have some fuel still in it. Um, but that's our fuel filter, our old one, uh, in the hoses. So I'm going to set this off to the side, away from the heater. I don't want any surprises. You just set this over here on the ground for now. Uh, so let me go ahead and um, disconnect here and somehow down there 
um, on the line going to the engine. So I gotta get that filter out. Jack this up just a bit so I could get under here and break this line. All right, so of course safety first. So we want to have a jack stand somewhere. All right, should be good to go. All right, so hopefully y'all can see it there. Um, we're gonna go ahead and take this filter out. Kind of got a little janky bracket anyways, ain't holding nothing. Um, yeah, disconnect it here. I'm gonna have to get something to cut this. Uh, the zip tie with, I need to get that first. I'll get the zip tie cut. Uh, when we'll take that filter out. And then this is a hard line back. Up here, right here. Go on in here, cut these zip ties out of the way. Let's this on the ground. I'll leave that. All right. All right, we're gonna go ahead and make the brakes here. All right, so there'll probably be some fuel that comes out of here. Shouldn't, shouldn't be much, but I anticipate this filter has fuel in it still. Seeing as the pump still had fuel. Of course, no pressure. The lines are already broken on the other side. Um, so yeah, that's that for down here. I can actually feed it out for now. And we're gonna come back to the top. Now that we're top side here, we're gonna make a break here at the regulator and demo that portion out. So I'm gonna just go here. I'm gonna hold on the regulator so I'm not forcing the firewall too much. It looks like this fitting here is turning. All right, so we'll break it here. And we're gonna take this filter and this hose assembly out. So I might reuse this hose. Um, Cause I did make this hose up and it looks pretty good. I know it's a new one, it's not very old. So if we're using this size, I think we're using 6AN. Uh, I can't remember what I ordered, but yeah, if it works, I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna keep it around for now. Because uh, it's a good line. Might save me some time. Alright. So we'll go ahead and save this hose to possibly use. Alright, and we'll get this filter out of the way. Okay, so the regular is staying. No issues there. This return line we may or may not reuse. For now, I'm going to leave it. We'll do it at the end if we have extra material left over to make it up. Um, but for now, uh, we can start installing parts. It looks like uh, I got everything out. Um, so I gotta find a place to mount everything. Obviously I have two filters, one before the pump, one after the pump, uh, and then I got the pump itself. So I think I'm going to start with mounting the pump. That way I know where my pre and post filters are gonna go in regards to where the pump's at. So let me figure out a place to mount the pump. It is the biggest um, portion of this build. So let's find a home for it first while we have all the real estate available to us. All right, so we're gonna float to the regulator. So we wanna mount it this way somehow. Where do we mount it is the, the question. So I say we mount it on the firewall because 
that's really going to be the easiest place although it's going to be super noisy on the firewall so um i don't know if i want to mount it on the firewall only because i don't want it to be super noisy uh let's see so i have a body panel that comes through here so i have to be cognizant of that let's see if it'll fit right here again no, right here might be golden. I think that's where I'm gonna have to put it, to be honest. Right there. Okay. So I think I know where I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it right here. And then as for the filters, that's a whole nother story. So for now, let me go ahead and mount the pump up. So we'll go ahead and get that mounted. Uh, and then we're gonna mark out our holes here for this pump. Let's see if I can find something to mark it out with. Want to flow this direction. I do not like it going metal to metal, especially with that weld there, too. That's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use some of this rubber to uh, isolate this pump. Um, I want to isolate the pump from the chassis, so I'm going to use some of this rubber that I, I bought for the fuel tank, and I'm going to put this on the pump to hopefully isolate some of that sound. Customized pump mount. All right, so this is gonna go like this. And then see that, what I'm talking about is that weld right here. I know it's gonna be hot, kinda hard to see, but there's a weld right there. I'm trying to bridge that gap so it's not teeter-tottering on it. Oh, that's gonna be perfect. And that's gonna give it a little more cushion for that pump too. All right, so my only concern will be how I'm coming out the bottom um, with my line because I'm about to make a quick 90. And hopefully I have enough fittings to do that. All right, so let's get this pump mounted back up. All right, let's look in some other stash spots. See if I could find some washers here. Let's check this one. I wonder if I could use some of these rubberized washers. Any sheet metal panels, that'd be slick. Some more dampening. I'm gonna use these uh, these self-tapper sheet metal um, washers, and they have a little rubberized seal. Uh, they're used on rooftops and um, putting together steel buildings, stuff like that, where you have to seal off your, uh, your self-tap screw but we're going to take those because those are going to um isolate the pump even more by adding another layer of rubber on the mounting bolts themselves so mounting screws so i'm going to steal four of those here's another one i might even be able to use the self tappers now that i'm thinking about it cool at least i got a plan so run those in Get that pump mounted. I should get my fitting on this pump first. So I'm gonna use these self tappers. They're insulated, that ought to hold. So we'll use that. Uh, I do wanna get my fitting on my pump though. So let's figure out which one we're gonna use here. So let me see what my fittings look like for the pump. So I got one here. Looks like an 8 an also. So go ahead and put that on. Sweet, it fits. Man, it doesn't leave you much clearance between those connectors though, that's for sure. Real close to those connectors. It's hard to even get a wrench on it. All right, make sure that's tight. I don't want any leaks, but don't over tighten it. Next thing. This side, 8 a.m. I think this is it here. Yeah, they mismatch, but these are just parts I had sitting around. So we're gonna use them. All right, hopefully that don't leak. That's the suction side anyways. So that won't have much pressure. All right. So let's get these on. I want to see this 90 
Well, I can mock it up after I get, get it in. It's not a big deal. All right, so I'm gonna self tap these bad boys in. All right, make sure our flow direction's correct. All right, so again, we're gonna come off our existing hole just to make it easier on ourselves. So let me get another one in here. Make sure it looks level. Let's see, we got the angle to get one in here. solid that's way more solid than it was so so far so good I think I'm gonna have to end up trimming it though for my panel to fit on I can see that already let's do a test fit on this panel Should have went more that way, I think. But let's see here. Did we get lucky? Oh, we got real lucky there, guys. Look at that fitment. Look at that fitment. That is about as good as it's gonna get. I mean, it's riding right on it. Might put a little foam on here, or a little rubber here too, just so it's not wearing out the side of this anodized pump. I want it to look all beat up. All right, so let's continue. Um, let's find these filters so I know where I'm gonna locate the filters. So the first one, I'm gonna put our male 8AN to 3 8 MPT fittings in our, I believe this is a 10 micron filter. Yeah, the 10 micron. So this will go after the pump, between the pump and the engine. Uh, in our case, after the regulator as well. I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna mount it here. I have to somehow miss this heater box. Maybe here. Um, that's not going to give me a good angle though, coming off of this regulator. If I can come down here, that's even better. I'm going to have to take a look underneath uh, what we're dealing with because we're really close to this heater box. So let me go back down underneath and take a look under the dash. <coughs> All right, so we got our filter kind of mocked up here with some fittings. Um, just want to see where we're going to land on this regulator. I'm thinking right here is about good. And I checked underneath in on the inside and there's plenty enough room here to put my mounts uh, taking care of for not hitting this heater core for my heater box um, and then the mounting bolt here uh, so let's just see how that fits we're going to go ahead and start throwing some mounts in and mount it up right here and that'll give us a straight shot to this regulator here right there so all right so i think right there is pretty good We want to make sure we got clearance for our filter. 
um, from this heater hose. So make sure. Yeah, so that'll work pretty good. Plenty of clearance. And then we're gonna put the other one somewhere up here. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to mount it there, but we'll see. Eyeball the level. So I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill it here. Trying to get it centered by eyeball. Throw another screw in here. the mount here on the uh, filter again this is a 10 micron filter um, post pump and we're going to mount it over here on the bottom the one that we just put in and we're going to double check it once more to make sure these bolt holes on top here uh, make sure these bolt holes on top don't run into anything on the back side of this firewall. So before we go ahead and throw those tech screws in there, uh, we're gonna take a quick peep. So I'll get right back with you guys uh, once I take a look at that. So I looked inside and there's absolutely nothing up here in this area. So we're good to go to uh, drill these holes or tap these, um, these, um, tap these screws as well. Let me get one of my straights and see if I actually have enough room to even build a line. So yeah, that's that's not much of a line there, guys. So I think I'm capable of building a line that short, so I'm going to commit to it. I really don't have a choice at this point, but let me get it level because it'll for sure have to be level in order to make a line that short. So let me show you what I'm working on here, how short that is. Um, there's no gap, hardly at all there. So when I make up this line, it's going to be a very short, short line. Um, so I'll see how that works. If not, I'll have to um, move the regulator over a little bit to make room to make a bigger line. But I'm going to try to make it that short. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be successful. Yeah, we're going to give it a try. I'd rather not move that regulator. So, got the camera set back up. We're going to continue here. I'm going to go ahead and screw in this bracket here. Because um, I like where it sits now. Alright, so go ahead and put this one in. So here we'll go ahead and pre-drill our last one here taking care not to hit our battery cable screw in on this filter uh, and then we just really have one more filter left and then it's lines all right so that's secure I ain't going nowhere all right so we're just going to screw these in here I'll clamp this all down don't worry about all the shavings. I'll get that all cleaned up once the lines are closed up. I don't want to mess around with the shavings, blowing them around with these lines open. All right. So yeah, that's pretty good. All right, perfect. Looks good. So you can kind of see what we're doing here. Coming out of the uh, tank into the filter or into the pump. Actually, I need another filter. So, 
I put the tank in, uh, it's not strapped down or anything, I'm just using it to kind of mock up what room I'm working with here for the rest of the, this fuel system assembly. So as you can see, the filter's mounted here on the firewall, uh, looks, looks pretty clean, I like the way it turned out. Um, we got it damn near even with this regulator, uh, but there's gonna be a really short section of some steel braided hose there. Hopefully I can make up hose that small. It might be a little challenging, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. Uh, because there's no movement there, I'm not really worried about that lack of uh, hose length. Um, it shouldn't move around anyways too much. It's all mounted to the same panel. If it were mounted to two separate panels, I would really want to have that hose length a little longer to give it a little more flexibility from moving. Uh, expansion, contraction, that sort of thing. But again, we're on the same panel, uh, so I don't anticipate too much movement there. No, uh, that should be a non-issue. So now what we need to do is get our system wired, our plumbed up. So what we need to do is start building our hoses out from the fuel pickup. Uh, we need to find a space for the pre-filter. Let me get that. So we went ahead and also got the fuel pump mounted up here. It's right on the frame itself. Let me see if I can get a little better lighting there for you. Yeah, got it mounted right there to that shock tower mount. Um, and then the tank we have in, just again mocked up. So that way we can see what kind of room we're dealing with here for clearances uh, when installing the rest of this fuel system. So the next thing will be um, mounting up the pre-filter to the uh, pickup, a 100 micron filter which will go into our pump there. And then for the pump, it'll go to that post filter we mounted on the firewall earlier. But as you can see, there's not a lot of room to work with here. Um, Cause there's a, a panel that runs right here for covering up this whole engine bay area. And as you can see, the filter is quite large. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fit in this space, but I'm going to try to do something somewhat like that, if you can see it there. So from the siphon tube on top, again, these are going to be short hoses just because I'm running with limited space. All right. So let me see if I can't get those hoses built up. I got the hose here. Got the filter, the hose, the fittings. I should have everything to get this done. Um, so I wanna try to get this started today. So hopefully I can get it started. Been a long time since I've actually had this thing running. So I'd really like to get some fuel in it today and get it running. Uh, but this is a nice big fuel pump. I'm really anxious to see how it performs. Uh, I don't feel that I had a fuel starvation issue, but let's see if we get a little more power with some more fuel. Uh, and then we'll take it to the dyno and then they could really tune us up with a dyno tune and pull as much out of this engine as we can. So I don't want to take it to the dyno with the old fuel system. That's why I'm really upgrading everything. So that way uh, it could support a, a dyno tune. Uh, that old pump. I just felt was not strong enough. All right, so we're gonna jump right back into it. I'm gonna start making up lines for mounting this 100 micron pre-filter. So let me get to it. I'm gonna start making up these hoses. Um, I'm gonna start from the bottom up. I'm gonna start down here with this fitting and work our way up. So let's go ahead and see if we can't put this fitting together. Now these are pretty easy. All you do is take the end off. Uh, and then this has a lip here that'll actually go into the hose. Um, but first you need to put this on the steel braided side. Uh, but you really want a clean cut here. Now this is some cheap steel braid. It's not the best. Um, I think it got it off Amazon or something like that. But either way, um, you see how it's frayed here at the end. That's gonna make it extremely hard to get this fitting on. So hopefully it doesn't unravel um, as we're putting this on. Uh, the cheaper these AN fittings are, it seems the harder they are to work with. Um, I know the ones from Summit work pretty good, uh, but some of them really don't give you a lot of um, space here to get it started. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna go 
Again, these are from, from Amazon. These are like the evil energy ones. Um, they work good, but like I say, sometimes this end is not flared very well. Uh, and it's not big enough to actually go over with ease. Um, so what I do when I make these is I use electrical tape to make my cut. Uh, and that way it keeps the steel braid together. Um, I'll make one up from the start here later, but this one was left over from another project. So I'm gonna try to reuse this section uh, without making a cut because I want to save as much of this holes as possible to get through this job. So I don't want to make another cut unless it's necessary. So I'm gonna try to get this end on. So you want to do it kind of quick because it starts fraying. It's, immediately after taking that tape off all right so once you get it on you're just gonna twist it in place and sometimes they're counterclockwise so i try both directions to see which one goes on easier all right, so let me get a wrench on it so we'll go ahead and um this one's counterclockwise i think so we're gonna turn it on counterclockwise uh, until we hit the bottom, until bottom's out. <sighs> Putting pressure on it the whole time so that it goes on. And yeah, these are a pain. It, it'll take you a couple tries to get used to it. And to be honest, sometimes they go easier than others no matter how many times you do it. Again, it depends on the fitting. I think the more expensive fittings actually give you more room to work because the ends flared out a little more to get it started and tapers in as you tighten it on. But these cheap ones like this, they work. They're just harder to mount and actually put on. All right, so that was a pain to even get the thread start it um, but essentially you take this put it in there um, and then thread it in and it essentially squeezes out from the inside of the hose out against this outer edge um, and then that makes the fitting that makes that connection leak tight so but it is a pain in the ass making these and fittings up will make a man out of you so get out there and try it yourself sometime because it ain't no joke especially like i said if you use these cheap ones from amazon they work in the end they get the job done but to be honest the assembly of it may not be worth it uh, because they just don't fit on the hose very well um, everything's just clearance way too tight. Um, it just makes it a lot more difficult. Okay. So, we got that one made up. As you can see there. We got the end of the hose and the steel braid. Um, the hose got a little bent doing it, but that's our end. And that's gonna go on to our pump here, like that. But we're gonna have very little clearance here for the filter. So we wanna make this connection as tight as possible because we don't have a lot of gap here. All right, so I went ahead and what I like to use is uh, electrical tape. I went ahead and used electrical tape here to uh, wrap around this steel braid. So what that does is while you're making your cut, it keeps the braid from fraying out on the ends, which will make it impossible to get this fitting on if it frays out. So uh, we're gonna make a cut right in the center of this electrical tape. And it also prevents the end of the hose that you haven't used yet from fraying out uh, while in storage. So make a cut right down the middle so half of the tape stays to keep the end of the hose that's not going to be used from fraying and also prevents fraying of the section you're going to use um, 
until the point where you pull the tape off and put this fitting on right away. Otherwise it comes unraveled and then you'll never get this fitting on. It's hard enough to get on as it is. Uh, and this is gonna be damn near a zero gap in between the two fittings only because I have limited space I'm working with. So let's go ahead and cut this. We got a new cutoff wheel. I'm gonna move away from my workspace so we don't get any shavings inside of the, the pump. So I'm just gonna cut it right down the center here of that electrical tape. All right, so hopefully the end did not flare too much and we can still make this end up. You can see how it's already trying to flare out. So yeah, that's what makes it hard. So I'm gonna just unravel this, try to get this together in one shot. All right, let's get to work. We're going to work our way around with our thumbnail I'll slowly turn and rotating. Make sure none of them get away from me. Then it's super hard to get these on. All right. We get um get a wrench on here so I get some better grip, and then I'm just going to. Use my weight. I'm gonna hold this other end too. Use my weight to just kind of work this down. And then we're gonna clean this out, obviously, before uh, committing to it fully. All right. So we're gonna take our assembly we just made up here. I'm gonna take this and install it on top of the pump. We got a little offset on our hose, which will work to our favor. So we want to get that angle because we are running close to this top bar up here. So again, I'm just mocking this up. None of it's going to be tightened. Just finger tight. Just to mock everything up in position as we're building out. So yeah, it's on the pump, it's on the filter, the finger tight. And yeah, I didn't use the right tools, so the anodization got all, it's probably not really anodized, probably just painted. So whatever, I marred it up. It's all good, I'm not tripping off that as long as it works. Uh, so we're gonna have, just like down here, we're gonna have a real short section here in between these two unions. So I'll try to, you know, bend it out and use the flex in here a little bit to pull it away as far as possible so I can make it as big as possible. And then I will attach it somehow here to this crossbar for uh, support. But that's gonna essentially be it there. All right, so let's make up this one. Yeah, it's gonna be another tough one too. They're all small. Minus this one here. Okay, so let's do this one, I guess. After that last piece, I'm not really looking forward to it, to be honest. That was a pain. So that one's perfectly on. That's what it made up to. Now we're gonna go ahead and um, go ahead and insert this part of the fitting into the hose without damaging it. This one again has a better taper to it, uh, just an all around better fitting than the other one I was using. So I'm happy to see that. It's gonna make this job go a little faster through this section, but you can see what we're making up here is a very short uh, uh, fitting. So we're just uh, got a really short length on our hose now. All right. We're going to tighten this up here just by screwing it in 
until it seats all the way down. So there's that section all made up. See it there? Just really short, straight, and then our 90 here, which is going to take us, which is going to take us to our tank. So you guys can see that there. And that completes that section of piping. So again, it's just finger tight all the way through. We gotta give it one look before we tighten it all up. We gotta affix it here, even though I don't think this is gonna move much. Uh, but I do wanna affix it to this crossbar as a little extra support. So we'll figure that out at a later date. But essentially from here to the pump outlet, we're done. So I need to get that to the regulator. So that's just one long line. taking a quick break from the time lapse before I put the tank in I want to show you where we're at on the fuel system again to recap we got the Holly pump here uh, which is a 400 liter per hour from what I recall uh, on top of it we'll go our pre filter here this is gonna be a hundred micron filter it's a Holly filter uh, and then it's gonna come up over the top with the AN fittings uh, a 90 right into the tank pickup. Uh, so that'll be attached to our fuel pickup tube. Um, so from there and through the pump, uh, it'll come 8 a.m. out of the pump, transition back over here towards the firewall and then into our regulator here. From the regulator, again, 8 a.m., 90 degree into our post filter. As you can see there, that's the Holly. Uh, 10 micron filter that will be the pre filter after the pump uh, from there again steel braided line a and fittings Over to our hard line which goes to the fuel rail. I'm gonna get the tank in I'm gonna get this pre filter uh, and hose assembly uh, mounted up to the top of the tank on the fuel siphon or the pickup tube um, and then hook up our fuel filler neck here for the top of the tank and our breather as well. Uh, in our breather, we are running a rollover uh, check valve. So in case of a rollover, it's not dumping fuel all over the place through the vent line. Uh, something to take into account when you're building a fuel system, safety first. All right, so we're gonna um, jump right back into it. Again, back to time lapse, because I'm trying to get this done. So it's the next day and I did get the uh, 33 finished. Uh, the fuel system is all done. And uh, so I got the Holly uh, pre-filter there. That's a 100 micron filter. Uh, got the 400 liter an hour Holly pump. I don't know the part number. And uh, I got the post filter there, which is 10 micron. Uh, mounted on the firewall and then the regulator that we're reusing 
uh, is leftover bits, but it's functioning well. Um, I did obviously drive it, it's out of the garage, um, so I've driven it. It runs well, I just wanted to show it to you guys before I end this video. Uh, another quick look, I got the uh, Eagle Tech Swap, I don't know if you follow the channel, but one quick look of that before we go to, it is supercharged. A uh, little shorty exhaust here. I got to finish this out with a trunk, but we ain't going over that right now. My tonneau cover, and then I did have some time to put uh, my vinyls on the back. So that's something new. Uh, if you guys ain't tapped into me, uh, obviously on YouTube, you're watching it now. And then we got our IG there. If you guys are on IG, y'all can go ahead and follow me there too. So we got a 33 here. I think what I'm going to do is just like fire it up, do a quick drive for y'all and uh, end the video while we jump in here. All right. Uh, we also got our new gauge here. Um, I didn't really show installing that. Maybe I'll make a separate video, but this video was pretty long already. So um, I'm not going to go over that in this video. Anyways, you can hear our pump priming. You can see the gauge is working. We got uh, 43, but it should go up to about 60 when we start it. So you can see we got fuel pressure there. Engine fire, fires right up. So yeah, the engine fires right up. Purrs like a kid. I'm gonna go ahead and um, Take it for a little test drive here. Let it warm up for a minute. If you guys haven't taken a look at the inside of the 33, we got our little uh, gauge cluster there. It's digital. Uh, I, I can't remember what the name of the company was that made that, but um, if you're all interested in a uh, review of this system, I could do that. Uh, some pros and cons but anyways let's get back to the video because uh, I need to end this video uh, so we're going to take it on a quick drive all right I'm going to try to drive a stick and hold this camera at the same time so bear with me if my drive is a little funky I'm one hand in this no leaks here it's running good so that's nice yeah we're gonna end this video here uh, one last look at 33 uh, it's running well uh, pulling good with the new fuel system I think it pulls better than it did with the old one so we probably lacking fuel but what I really got to do is get it tuned I'm not gonna drive it too much until I get it tuned with that being said, if you know any tuners out there in the Bay Area, tell them to hit me up or, you know, DM me on IG. That's Brett underscore media underscore IG. But uh, go ahead and hit me up. So I'm looking for a tuner in the Bay Area to tune my shit. Uh, again, it's an Ecotech swap 2.0 liter uh, LSJ engine. So with a supercharger. So I'm looking for a tuner in the Bay Area. With that being said, I'm gonna end this video, but if you watched it this far along, I got a quick question for y'all. Make any comment below. Just let me know you were watching. Um, 
what kind of content do you guys like? Do you like these videos like the one today? Where it's more of a like a shop project style video, maybe a how-to video. Do you like uh, more car reviews? What do you watch? You know, do you watch like cooking or gardening? I don't know. Just comment below what you want, what's your favorite uh, YouTube uh, channel style. And um, I'm just curious to see what my viewers are into. So if you're watching this today and you hear that, go ahead and comment below what's your favorite style YouTube videos, you know, kind of what you into and what do, what do you watch? So I love to see you guys' responses. I know I'm at 308 subscribers, it's not a lot but it's a lot to me. I appreciate each and every one of y'all, uh, but I would like to see you guys interact with the channel if you could, just take a moment. And if you're watching on TV and you can't um, make a comment, just go ahead and hit that like button, you know? Give it a thumbs up, all right? So uh, that'll end it for this video. I appreciate it if you comment below. Obviously, I want you to subscribe because um, this is the kind of car content I put out and a lot of different other styles too, like car meets, car shows, uh, and that sort of thing. All right, but until next time, stay good, family. Peace.